Welcome back to the Football Stop, where today I am joined by the one and only Panini Fora. I'm delighted to have him here at the channel. Uh, how are you today? All good, mate. All good. Looking forward to this. It's going to be a good chat. I'm really looking forward to it too. Um, so, first of all, the big question is, uh, where did it all begin for you? Uh, well, I have actually prepared something, which I didn't <laughs> tell you about before we started recording. But Orbis, got nothing to do with Panini. But right. have you seen this before? I haven't. I've heard of Orbis, but I've never seen that, no. Well, Orbis kind of died out afterwards, but this is where it all began. I mean, look at the size of that. Wow. <laughs> so basically, that, that album, that would have come out around February 1990. And um, I started collecting it. But what, how it came, it was like a weekly supplement you'd get. So you'd get a little bit of the album every week. And it was like 20 supplements and to a nine or eight or nine year old boy waiting a week for 10 pages and then another week for 10 pages. It was like really painful. So while I was collecting that, then I was sort of obviously in the in the news agents at the time in the deepest, darkest East London and um, strolled, uh, stumbled across an Italian 90 packet for 15p. And I thought, oh, I'll have that. See what's going on there. And then. From all I can remember after that was I used to get a pound pocket money a week. This is going to sound so old. I'll get a pound pocket money, a pound a week pocket money. And um, obviously that could only buy me six, six, six packets. And I'd always have 10p and I only need 5p. So I used to just do all sorts just for that extra 5p. And my mum and dad had no idea why I want an extra 5p. Like half the time I just go, well, just have it. Like, yeah, it's 5p. Even then it weren't a lot. But um, it was just so I could get seven packets and I opened one packet every day until my pocket money come around on the Saturday again. So uh, that's where it all began, Steve. Um, yeah, it takes me back that. It's quite Mate, I, I, I love that. I mean, I'm not familiar with that album, but um, I think a lot of probably younger people maybe don't appreciate what it was like to have to go to your local news agents and kind of actually have them in your hands. A lot of people that maybe in the hobby now just don't get that because everything's no, now No, no, they online. don't get the feel for it. I think that's half the fun going there and you, they might have sold out, which is obviously devastating, but that was all the more exciting just to see one of these boxes on the shelf. And you're like, yeah. wow, and you just home in on it, go straight for that, dig them out, see if you can have a look, see who's on the, if you can see through the numbers and all that, for what you need, yeah. there's a shiny on the front and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was great days. I mean, that was just pure innocence collecting, you know. I mean, what we've got today is just an absolute beast. And uh, yeah. it's, you know, I've seen it change probably five, ten different times. It's rebranded itself and gone in different directions and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a sticker man at heart, but um, I do love a card as well. So that's so you've almost naturally taken me on to the kind of next question there, which is what you've just mentioned there what have you observed in the last 12 months? Because obviously a lot's gone on. Like even since I joined the hobby and started getting involved, things have changed like massively. Um, is this the first time you've seen this happen then? Or like you say, has it gone in waves before? It, it does. It does go in waves, but I think this time around, obviously we were sort of slowly gearing up again, like March last year when it all sort of uh, went to shit. Um, we were slowly gearing up to the Euros and obviously like the preview to come out, the sticker collection and the Euro, the select and that was sort of like bubbling and everything. And so we're just about to gear up for that. And then obviously it stopped. And I was first as a football fan, devastated because I've got tickets to the, the Euros and stuff as well. But um, it was just, oh, wow, that's like no tournament for, are they going to cancel it? It was all unclear yeah. and everything. But obviously, yeah, within probably about two or three weeks, you could just see glimpses of things. Like I, I follow like um, the stock market a little bit, which is quite similar to sports cards at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Um, probably will be for a long time. But um, I know like the the guys who own PSE, their sh share price in the UK, a uh, PSA, sorry, their share price has gone nuts. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, 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 the values of the stickers and cards have kind of followed the value of that company because they're a good guy because if they're doing well the industry's growing and i think their share price was at about 15 dollars 15 cents a share and now it's about 80 85 cents or whatever so wow. six six fold in a year and that's pretty much the same to a lot of values really of some old collections and stuff where it's given people that time to sort of like finish old collections they ain't got around to doing 
and um for me where i i had nothing to deal with to do because all the stickers were sort of done and dusted so oh, let's have a look at cards and now I've got like a tower of storage <laughs> units next to me over towering like up here at the moment full of cards. And I've just got hooked on that now. And it's just, it's like you're starting the hobby all over again a little bit. I can say, I remember, I think last time I saw the wall behind you or an image of it, it looked like it was just stickers. And now looking behind you, you've got obviously Chronicles. I can see a few Korea Japan boxes, uh, some Adrenaline Plus. There's all kinds, Don Russ. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a real so, mix behind you. So uh, what... What um, what was your first venture into cards then? Is that recent to the last um, like four months as well? I just, I mean, it just because from a, it took me a while to get my head around the, the the prices in the US. Like I think it does all of us really, just trying to add it up, thinking, wow, you know, coming from a Mexico seventy background, I'm thinking every card every card in that collection, you're looking at five six quid, and now you're buying cards from the, the states. It's, uh, that when you first buy them you're like bloody hell what's this about uh, it's, it's crazy but um so bear in mind of that and obviously having a bit of a dabble i did sort of dabble with like the adrenaline stuff because they do like the euros and the world cups and stuff so i thought right okay i'll go back to the panini sort of trading cards as well so then that's like the france 98 which i think i've got yeah. in the box of here and um yeah the 2002 and 2006 26. so i looked at the world cups and like the the it's weird because they've got the Panini trading cards and then they've got the Panini Adrenaline that kind of kicked in at the same time in 2010 as the long silence. So I'm not, yeah, I don't, I weren't collecting cards back then, so I couldn't tell you what's what. And then obviously you sort of see the quality of the cards and um, that kind of takes you down like the prism route and mm. um, look at them. And I remember the first time I sort of bought a box of them or whatever and it turned up and I opened, I think it was the Premier League one. I think it was like 19, uh, 2019, 2020. And like the silver base cards, I thought, wow, these are, yeah. these are pretty sexy. And then that was it. <laughs> <laughs> you're in. And now, you're, yeah. now obviously you're, got, you're in deep. Got me. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to kind of take, I'm going to try and steer this more towards stickers if that's okay, because I have obviously, yeah. I've got you for a short period of time. And, and in terms of a social media following and in terms of, having a collection you're probably one of the leaders in the social media world i'd certainly consider you that if i yeah. if i go to somebody for information on the stickers you're probably my first point of call um so one of the questions that came in from twitter from mitch at, at london cards was if you were to ignore the 1970s mexico collection which other one really kind of captures your attention and do you think is almost a, a sleeper or your favorite if you like so uh, go, go for favorite and then answer it yeah in, no i mean Again, I'm, I'll set aside Italian 90 as well because um, there was a little uh, questionnaire on that the other day. And I said, I, I kind of I, I ignore Italian 90 because I love it so much because it was my first World Cup. It completely blindsides you to looking outside of that. So I would say Mexico 86, really, just because um, it's just a fantastic design. Um, I don't remember the World Cup. I was five. But, um, you know, it's got like Maradona, Hand of God and all that. You kind of sort of like remember that sort of thing. Lineker being top scorer and everything. But from the collection point of view, I just think it's really, really nice. It's just a really nice collection. Um, there's some nice sort of posters in there. And you've got, obviously got like the, the shinies and all that sort of stuff as well. But again, and, and try not to get swayed too much about obviously what's happened to Maradona last year. But um if you're talking sort of money, that Espana 82, if you'd have bought a set of that, you could have probably picked up a set of that last year for seven, 800 quid, something like that. You can't even buy Maradona sticker for that. Yeah. And you could have bought the whole collection. So that would have been a good one to have a, a set or two of. Yeah. So I, I picked up the Maradona 82 sticker for 80. Um, that's really probably, good. Probably that's in like when, June, yeah. July. And yeah. I was like, but that's what it was selling for. Yeah. yeah, and at the time I was like, "This is this is quite high for a sticker." For a sticker. Yeah, and I was like, "It's got good condition, etc." And now, like, the, it's at PSA at the moment, and I'm like, "Please come back, do yeah. okay." Oh cool, um, yeah, even if you get a seven or an eight or something, I think it would still be worth like at least four or five hundred quid. Yeah, easy, probably. for me as well, it's about protecting it as a as yeah. in the collection. That's that's my main reason for grading. Personally, I'm more about 
keeping it in the collection and looking after it rather than yeah. that, rather than doing it for uh, purely financial yeah incentive. That, that's one for the pc and it's going to stay there in it really exactly I mean, um, yeah unless you've got two or three and then uh, but even then you still i think you still have an attachment to it because it's so significant in the world of football you know the history of football really i mean even though he was useless in that world cup <laughs> Well, is it Argentina were awful in that World yeah, Cup? Yeah, but yeah, cool. Um, so in terms of we've we've kind of talked about grading there a little bit. Are you somebody that grades yourself, or do you stay clear of it? How do you feel about no, it? I, I I like I do wide. I mean, people who do deep message me, I'd say sixty percent of the time I'm on a wind up. <laughs> <laughs> you seem like that kind of guy. I love it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like when I, I did a podcast recently with uh, Sunday League investors and stuff as well, and I was really, I just decided to get go on in the messy wind up a little bit, really, because <laughs> I knew they had loads of him, and I think it upset them a little bit. I'm sure they'll get it. I'm sure they understand me by now. But um, um, I would say that, sorry, what was the question? I've just gone off on one, haven't I? Uh, that's all right. I, I think given I'm from the UK, I, I kind of appreciate some East London banter, whereas I suppose the guys from uh, SLI, I don't know where they're from, actually, uh, maybe find it a little bit more yeah, difficult. Uh, Flor Florida, they are. Florida, Florida. right, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, as soon as I started speaking, Charles, like, this guy's got some crack, this guy's... Uh, got, <laughs> um, so, I just so, find that a wind-up. But, but yeah, so what was... Um, no, that's fine. That? So the question was, um, firstly, what are your thoughts on grading, basically? Where do you stand? Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so, um, so I said... I, I don't know, I was in a bit of a funny mood that day and I said, why do I want to send my football collection to a load of Americans who've got no idea about football and have only been collected, who've only been in the industry for 10 years? It's like me, why am I sending a card I know or a sticker I know what it is and what significance it is, especially the older ones, the stickers. Why do I, it, you don't, like, I don't go to my two-year-old daughter to tell me how good my sticker collection is. <laughs> And that's what I'm doing if I send it to PSA. That's what I was saying anyway, which, you know, obviously like the certification and it's good. And But it's, if I really wanted to monetize the whole thing, then I would, I've never sent a, uh, anything to PSA or Beckett's or um, SGC, is it, or something yeah. like that, whatever. But I, I see the appeal and I do get tempted because I've got a few cards that probably could do with uh, some regulated reg regulated body sort of like having a look at it but i still i go on their website and they're like, oh i've been collected for 12 years 12 years you have a laugh <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's it's i think it's the 30 year old collection uh, collector in me which just does doesn't make sense for me to send football created in the uk sending it calling it soccer yeah. for someone who doesn't can't even pronounce the name right <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Give me a score out of ten. Mate, this this video. Any Americans watching this have just thumbs down my video anyway. But um, <laughs> yeah, no. I don't care. Like I, I don't said, care. I'm on the wind up. I'm <laughs> winding up. I like to have, I like to tease a little bit. Of that yeah, too, no. So. I, to be honest, mate, I think I I can kind of agree with you on that. I think and I, I think a lot of older collectors. Again, I talked just before we kind of started recording this. I said a lot of the groups on Facebook in, in particular, where you've got a lot of the guys that have been into vintage for a long time like absolutely detest slabbing cards like i know mm. have you the book behind me the football collectibles book carl in that absolutely like it's almost like every other page you turn it's just like you might as well just have yeah. i hate plastic written yeah. across yeah. every page yeah um, you think what it's doing for the environment as well remember we're green party yeah. down in brighton we don't want all this plastic <laughs> crap anywhere i'm the only one who when displays his cards i've got i've got timber sticks for it <laughs> that's a proper also wood <laughs> Proper environmentally friendly there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, with that in mind, I think it's really good to get your perspective on that. And I think that that's Please, fair I, enough. I, I, I think, I don't know if that will ever really truly work in the UK. What, a grading I company? Yeah, I think I think a lot of people, although I'm joking a little bit, I think there's, there's a little bit of truth in there. And I think people will, one, they'll think, well, I'm, they don't like not having a car for six months, whatever it's going to take. Mm -hmm. and uh, especially if it comes back and then it's not what you're expecting as well you know it's you can be a bit downbeat on it but um i think really i think people will just make their own mind up 
and um, they, they will, will be better with photography to be able to see it. So then if we do sell it to someone who wants to grade it, go for it, you know. Mm. But um, I don't know. I, 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 I struggle to think about sending like a thousand cards um, across the pond sort of thing to get some recognition when, again, I, I kind of I know what they're worth to me. And I think we're 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 we've had the stick, especially like the football collection. They're probably the same with maybe um, baseball and stuff, where they've obviously been collecting baseball cards for as long as like the football cards and stickers have existed. But um, I I don't I don't see the appeal a little bit. There, there is there is that's the serious side of me a little bit. I think I I don't need to send it to tell me what it's worth, uh, especially when a lot more UK collectors. It's a lot of sweeping statements about the UK here. I mean, I'm completely different to most UK people, but um, we we just see it as in, no, I don't, I don't get it. Mm. I don't need yeah. it. That's fair enough. Yeah, I think for me, like it has. Like, I've submitted, I submitted to PSA, and I, I've waited a long time. I'm, I'm slightly uncomfortable by the fact of the value. You look of like a patient now. man. You're being very patient with me, oh. so I'm sure you're. <laughs> I'm a patient guy. Um, but yeah, it takes forever. It costs a lot of money. Let's be frank. It costs a hell of a lot of money for. I don't. I don't even. I, I could guess what it is. I've kind of looked into it a little bit, but I didn't read the small print or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. I'd imagine, you know, yeah, if you if you're sending a card worth a hundred quid and it's going to cost you 10, 15 quid to send it or at dollars, least, at least, at least, yeah, yeah at least. See, um, and it's been, yeah, I think I think I saw something. Um, yeah, I think it was another, uh, another someone else on Instagram said uh, how much it will cost to sort of get a thousand dollar card graded. And I'm not spending hundred hundred dollars to get a thousand dollar card graded. Yeah, right. I know. Obviously, if you want to sell it, great. Maybe one day I will want to sell stuff. I sell bits and pieces, which is like spare stuff, really. But if there was really something, I thought, wow. You know that's going to buy me a new house, which it probably will one day. Mm. Seeing how like the price prices are going and everything, then maybe I'll look into it. But I don't know. I think if, if you want to grade it, go for it. If you don't, don't get hung up on it. Yeah, you don't have to follow the trend. You know, do what's right for you. I mean, you you said it. I think you said it. There was a little bit of psychology on one of your um posts today or whatever. You know, it's not about me. It's about us and it's about the community and all that. And I think that's the same with how you collect you do what's right for you if you want to buy something for 100 quid send it away for six months to sell it for 500 quid then yeah you could probably make a nice little living out of it doing it that way but no i'm too attached to most of my valuable yeah. cards i wouldn't want to send them in the post to anyone really like let alone sort of um yeah psa so mate yeah. completely i'm like so like i've got a zidane i've got and i'm just like if that's on my hands and goes missing i'm not going to get another one like is that is that the uh, he's rookie one at yeah. Nimes, is it the ninety two yeah from yeah. oh you, I can't remember the name but yeah the Nimes Nimes is it Nimes something like that Cans yeah, sorry yeah. it's Cans Can that's it Can, yeah that's Can, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but yeah like you say I'd be a bit I'm a little bit I've still not yet made the move to post it but hey ho so I was going to ask you a question about whether there's an opportunity for a grading company to be to become the football company but we're going to we're going to squash that because there's point. I might us. cover that. That's what <laughs> I said. Um, so what I'll do, I want to ask you this one instead. What are your thoughts? We're going to go into sealed product. Now, I kind of feel like the answer sat behind you. Um, of, like thoughts on sealed products as investment uh, versus oh. individual oh. stickers. Oh, without as. a doubt. I mean, there's such a huge difference in price as well. I mean, I had someone the other day. Everyone always moans at me how much I try and charge for my stuff. But my point being is um, whatever I've got, it's like I'm one lady owner when you buy a little car, a little second, little second hand run around. Do you want to buy something that's worth a little bit more from someone who's looked after it? It's <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at that example. <laughs> it's, I'll tell you what, it's a good one. I, I thought of it the other day and I thought, right, I'll, I'll write that down. I'll write that down. That's the crack. It is. Or do you want to buy something that's been taken, sold, shipped, kept so shit and it's moved around and you know how things work i mean i tell you, i've always fancied bugging one of my packets of stickers and just see <laughs> see how it like travels around the world and that'd be amazing it but be. um but it's, it's like yeah we were talking about a, a 2002 uh career japan box 100 100 packet sealed box and uh i've got a few they're a little bit out of picture 
So I thought, and I want to raise a bit of money for my shop, which I know we're going to come on to in a minute. Yeah. But um, so I said, I can't remember what I said now, four or 500 quid or something like that. And he said, oh, this one sold for 250, 280 or something. I said, look at it. Like someone's sellotaped it shut. And it's a ca Canadian version as well, not the UK version, whereas mine is like factory sealed. Yeah. It, and someone's opened that box up. Where's that? Where's Latan? Where's Latan? Oh, there he is. That's what, that's what people do. It's cutting and shutting. It's like cocaine. Like mine's pure <laughs> cocaine, what I sell. Whereas theirs is all mashed up, chopped up, moved on to the next guy. Yeah, no, I think that's actually, that's a, that's a bit, we're laughing, but actually it's a really good point that I've not really thought about a great deal. Um, like if, in, if you bought a car, you, if you bought a car and yeah. there's only one person on the V5 document, and, and they've had it since new, like, oh yeah, that's why they're charging 1,800 quid for that. If you get another card, V5 documents in tatters, it's only been there for 18 months. Like, right, I'm putting an offer, I'll offer you like 800 quid. Exactly yeah. how, it's exactly the same with cards and stickers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a really, really good point. When you should almost be treating boxes like you should be, you treat a card, visually yeah. then. When you buy a yeah. card, you look at it and think, that looks good, that looks bad. You make yeah. your decision where, That's it. where it was factory sealed and you're looking for something like a rookie sticker, like a Zlatan or something, mm. you know, if it's sealed, if it is in there, it's going to be, you're going to have a better chance at getting a graded nine or 10 or something. Otherwise you're going to have you know, a, a, bo a box that clearly shown signs of being um, manipulated and opened and that one, yeah. if there's five packets in there, you're all straight away, you're 20% chance down because they've looked at the back of the packet to try and see the number on it. So that straight away that cuts a load of money out of the box, doesn't it? So I've got loads of little sales techniques like that, Steve. I'm happy to pass on to you when you're trying yeah. to sell something. Mate, it's not, I've honestly not thought about it. Like I, I didn't, I, I suppose I had, I did have a question down here around um, avoiding fakes because we know, particularly when you start looking at the 1970s yeah. collection, oh, there's a ton mate, out it's, there. It's, yeah, it's getting bad now. And that's well, well, not to scare people, but is. Um, it, it was used to just be Mexico 70 and now it's sneaking into 74, 78, 82, 86, 90 mm. and even older ones than that you can see some like dodgy photocopied or facsimile sort of like um, um, copies of like an old Maradona, like a Maradona that obviously is worth like a few hundred quid and mm. people are doing it and or they, they'll say USA 94 it's a photocopy and then they'll call it his rookie as well yeah. <laughs> it's just a funny the, dive field, isn't it? What, what worries me about it is that like we're, we're talking there about World Cup collections, but it's okay for if someone might sell it and they might say on the eBay, say on the on the listing, this is a, a reprint. And they might be really open about that. And then yeah, if, if you want to buy the yeah. reprint, you go and yeah. buy it. My There's issue then, stuff. Yeah. my issue then is that the person that buys the reprint might want to just go flip it and won't be as honest. And then all of a sudden, no, you're in, because you're like been, this dynamic. Yeah, they've, they've been stitched up and they didn't read the small print and all yeah, that. Sort of stuff. I, I yeah. can just see it. I can just see it happening now. And uh, it, it's, it's definitely a big issue. So is there anything, how do you avoid it? I suppose if, if you were, I, buying... I still, I still fall foul of it recently. Uh, last year I did, I bought a Juanito um, poster um, with the Mexico 70 map on. Um, I just needed, I just wanted a couple of fronts cause I was sort of um, clean fronts because uh, I was collecting another, collection because i'm bored nothing else to do and um it looked perfect in the photo it looked absolutely perfect and the way they took a photo of the back it looked fine i was all oh, this i almost compare it to what i've got already sort of and have a look and it turned up and it was clearly on sort of like some sort of polaroid kind of film like paper and everything and i straight away like wow for fuck's sake what have i done <laughs> you know and uh, to be fair he, gave, he refunded me and everything and i said you know uh, it, it weren't clear and he he claimed that he didn't know either sort of thing which is mm. fine you know they're always going to uh, plead ignorance and stuff and they but um it still happens it's a nightmare but like i do and i've said it before and i say I, nine times out of ten i'll be able to tell from a photo and if anyone's got a photo or something they've seen online or send me a link i'll look at it i'll, I'll look at i'll look at instagram and i'll let you know what i think sort of thing you know there's no it's a 99 percent then a little asterisk guarantee that I'll get, give you the right answer. But um, yeah, it's uh, for the sake of someone spending, you know, a month of buying it, it coming to them, then complaining, try and get the money back, all that sort of stuff for the sake of like a 30 second 
click the photo, send it over to me on at Panini Four or whatever, and then um, yeah, I'll try and help. Yeah, that's that's great. Really, that's a great offer for everyone. Cheers for that. Um, I'm really, I'm lovely like that. You, that is a that is very nice. <laughs> Um, and I suppose people are watching this that are graders that are going to be thinking about our conversation 10 minutes ago are going to be thinking that's the rationale for grading, but then yeah. grading companies yeah. also get it wrong guys. So that's something else yeah. that just assume yeah. grading companies are right. Yeah. Cause because they've only been doing they're, they're like 25 and they've only been doing it for like four years or something. That's why mm. they get it wrong. Yeah. So it, yeah, I can only see this kind of getting, becoming a bigger issue, I think with the, uh, yeah. with the, with the reprints. So another question that came in, um, it was around modern products and this is one i've posted about a few times now to kind of get people's thoughts so i'm interested to hear yours um with your kind of like 2018 2000 like basically more recent products what are your thoughts on them as like the, pri the prism sort of thing. no so i'm still i'm still talking stickers so panini world oh, right, okay oh okay yeah yeah, yeah yeah um obviously we know 2018 for example we'll take that because it's the most recent yeah. what are your thoughts on uh, buying and holding them um I, I i do it so i would say do it and for instance the world cup 18 uh a, a, a loose set has gone up in value because panini are now selling it for 120 quid as opposed to 85 so you kind of that sort of follows how these are valued and um even though more and more people are coming on there will still be stickers in there that people haven't produced that player in a card. Yeah. And so you're still going to have that every now and then there'll be a rookie in there, which obviously sort of floats a lot of people's boat and everything. But in terms of design, I think it's a load of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like that Euro 2020 preview was awful. Oh, that was awful. Yeah. So crap. It was yeah. awful. The row two was much better than that. Um, but the, the Russia one was nice. I like that. I like it, but I think it's because, Maybe it was because Euro 2020, they didn't actually have a theme because it's in 14 different countries. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt there. But where you look at the Russia one, it's lovely with all the St. Basil, like Basil um, Cathedral and all that sort of stuff, and Red Square and all, all the Russian type like writing and everything. It's, 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 it's I'm, nice. I'm pleased to hear you say that was a good one because that's the one box that I've got a few of. So it's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah that's, that's in good nick as well. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. What, what is it, UK? Is it? Uh, how do you tell? I don't know. I'm sure my show me, the, show me the money on the bat. Show me the currency. Oh, it might be German. German, I think. Yeah, it's all right. It's international. That's international. I think, I think that'd be like European sort of or whatever. But, so um, that's yeah. where you bat. Like, it, it doesn't now. matter. It doesn't matter. It depends who you're selling to. You've got a lot more people to sell in Europe than you have in the UK. So it's good to mix it up a little bit. I think I've got a Russian one and a Dutch one and all that sort of stuff. And, but, and there's like but, hidden, like hidden the, rarities I, in that, yeah? Um, in terms well, yeah, of different think, backs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, is it the Swiss one that it was like gold and stuff like that, which was nice, yeah. obviously from Mbappe, and then you got pink back ones from Mbappe and stuff like that. But even then, I mean, they're, they're, they well, even though you can buy them for well, maybe not still now, but you could buy a, a stick of, of Mbappe for twenty five p from Panini. But yeah. people were selling them for like twenty five quid. They're like, <laughs> wow, here we go. Uh, um, so a little bit of money spinning for some, but. No, I think there will always be a place for stickers. Um, it's affordable. It does it. It appeals to the, uh, especially a younger generation of uh, sticking in the book. And that's how you should start. I think. I think everyone should sticker. That's what you're meant to do. You know, you can worry about keeping it to one side and keeping a loose set and all nice and pristine. And you know, that when you're older and you've got more, you know, more like thought in your head. Uh, uh, you've got a better thought process and you're thinking further down the line when you're sort of 12 years old you want to get a packet of stickers rip them open stick them in and that's what you should do 100%, and that, yeah. that's, you get so much fun out of that and i still do that like I, I buy it i fill a book stick it all in knowing that i'd probably cost me a fortune to do it but um but that's that's what it's all about and then you know, do a few little swaps and stuff it's good it's nice but you know when you're a bit old and you've got a few more quid to dispose of and stuff then obviously you can sort of afford to get a second set and keep that yeah. loose and and then put that to one side and everything but um, there's, there's always going to be a place because it's, it's, it's the best way for anyone to start i think yeah. if they like if they get hooked on the base of sticking in an album then they're going to be yeah you're going to be interviewing them in 15 years time when you're <laughs> you're, you're 40 um i must admit like this is so it's not panini but i've been doing this one um 
and I have been sticking thing, sticking it in, and I've loved it. It's just it's the first exactly. time I've stuck in for a while, and, and, and uh, especially you did nice and neat, getting it oh, right yeah. in the corner first, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, and, it's very satisfaction. And this is one thing I'd like to touch on. People do not talk about the psychology involved in this industry as well, because it is. I mean, you, you, you're borderline OCD. Um, to be a collector, I think it does yeah, appeal yeah. to a certain person. It's funny actually. There's a there's a guy on Instagram I talk to quite a lot, and we found out we do the same job today, and that completely sums up why we're uh, what we do, what we do. But um, but you know, there's an OCD factor there, but there's that satisfaction in completing something, and I think and I touched on it before as well. So I apologise to anyone listening who've heard me say it before, but um, we like to finish something. Yeah. And that's the only thing I struggle with with the cards. You can't you can't complete it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have every black prism, are you? No, no, I, I completely can relate to that 100 percent. So I, that, that's that's why I think stickers you can you can physically complete the 650 stickers or whatever it is now, which is mad. But um yeah, actually I think calculator is like 900 now. Yeah, it's massive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's ridiculous. You get a like third division pub team or whatever collection <laughs> in that set. It's mad. Yeah. But um, but you know, it is yeah, you can finish it and it's it's still a, a completed album, neatly stuck in, no scores written in, sealed away, tucked away. Mm -hmm. It'll still do all right over the years and stuff. You still won't have a problem. You can still like buy it. Well, now like the Mexico 70. A, uh, a completed album there, like in great condition, filled in. You still get four grand for it. Is that what they're going? You know, that, that's the going rate yeah. now for a seventy. Yeah. For, for if you keep it, you know how you have like in the staples, you have the stickers, like the loose stickers in there. If you leave them, any free packet and all that sort of stuff, leave all that stuff, fill it in, and then close it. Store it f flat. Don't store it up like that because it buckles all the uh, staples and the pages mm. and all that. But it's still, yeah, that is, so there's still some value there. But arguably, you know, that was obviously a different time and everything now. And um, the, probably the comment would be the fact of how many you get and everything like that. Now the 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 supply is just mental, isn't it? For that, I suppose that's always been the thing in in the back of my mind. Or that goes against collect like investing in sealed product from the last few years. It's just like they're just like like you just said, printed in their billions, and it's like yeah. The, the one thing, the one shift I could see maybe is if people do start grading and obviously it looks like things are going to go that way, then you've got this yeah. kind of like perfect storm whereby you've got collectors trying to complete things, which is obviously the OCD aspects and, and really important to them. And then you've also got the grading chase where people want the perfect sticker. Yeah. And we, we know, yeah. like, we know that it's really difficult to get. And all of a sudden, despite the fact that supply is big, um, maybe there is an opportunity there. So that's like, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's just kind yeah, but, of something I'm thinking. At the, moment. The, the, the industry evolves and it always has done. It changes. It goes in 10 different directions every year, but to counteract the uh, argument of the sealed product, I must see 50 new breakers come every, online every week. Yeah, exactly. And what are they doing? Opening. So there yeah. isn't going to be the silk product for the cars point of view. And if they can't afford the cars, there'll be a market for people doing it with the stickers soon yeah. as well, I'm sure. Which there is what's happened with Pokemon. That's yeah. literally what's happened with Pokemon exactly. over the last And then, then people were like, oh, well, yeah, I could keep that silk box for 80 quid or something. Or, you know, I could split it up and I'll make about 120 quid. People are going to do it. Like if yeah. you're a 15, 16 year old kid and you can make 40 quid in an afternoon, you do it. Yeah, 100%. God, I wish I was making 40 quid in an afternoon at, as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, know. But I was making I was like £1.5p. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 I trumped that just, but I worked Monday to Saturday with a paper round and a Sunday morning paper round, and I think I got oh, 17 okay. quid. Shocking times. It like. wipes you out for the day. Yeah, I think I did one it wiped me out. I did. I think <laughs> I covered a mate who was on holiday for a couple of weeks. And yeah, the end of a seven day, five, 5 a.m. start, seven days on the trot. You get given fifteen quid or something. Yeah, the only good thing yeah, is when there's when there's a freebie. After, that was it. Yeah, that's the only benefit was when there was a freebie slid into the newspapers. You had first dibs. So oh, you know, you in the take back of Yeah, so. you did. Like, you don't want this, do you, darling? <laughs> no, 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 you want. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, mate. I'm conscious. I know you're a big West Ham fan, so uh, the game is on. But obviously, yeah. a big thing I wanted to talk to you about as well is 
big, something big is happening. You mentioned this a while ago, but uh, Panini Fora is opening a shop. Is that right? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, it's we, We're much closer than we were last year, but obviously some things have happened that have set us back, um, you know, like a pandemic and all that. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone going bust on the high street but um but no we like to go against the well, i like to go against the grain um i think the um yeah we're looking at like a pop-up shop to see how it goes but for three months um down here in brighton i uh, looked at three places today so um i'm in negotiations really to see what we can do and hope to open something up around mid-april that would stay open till sort of mid july see out the euros because as long as that doesn't move which it might do yeah but um but you know it's not not just about sort of like selling stuff there that will be i think we need a i think we need a few hubs everyone's doing what we're doing in their spare room or whatever you know and um it's uh, the community is about being together and, and being and swapping and trading and doing deals i hate doing deals by message I think it's awful. It's so it's so cold, you know. You, it's like the whole eBay thing. You're putting offers in and all that, and it, when you're in front of each other, you can have a bit of a laugh about it. If it doesn't mm -hmm. work, it doesn't work, and you move on. But you can touch and feel and all that. And, and obviously, being touching people and feeling people at the moment <laughs> is a big no-no. But you know, we can still do it behind masks. And um, when the size of the shop should allow sort of like four to six people in there that's all you need you only need two people in there to do a trade you know mm. and um but on the back of yeah we, i've got uh i've got a, i've got a uh, international sports presenter um who does uh twice a week reports from big matches and uh i've kind of struck a deal with his um tv company to do something for me <laughs> And uh, so he'll be reporting live from the game and uh, we'll mainly focus on young kids and stuff. And I think it's people, again, everyone talks about rookies and does a photo of them and says, oh, he's he did three key passes, blah, blah, blah. But to have someone pitch side talk about the game just before and just after and do a match report there and then on someone who you've been following, you've got a few cards of. I thought that could be quite fun. So we're yeah. looking at that and then probably do like a few podcasts from the shop. Uh, I'm going to invite a few breakers down to do like, you know, a couple of box breaks live in the shop and all that sort of stuff. Just have some fun because it's been shit in it. <laughs> Mate, it sounds, sounds awesome. Uh, I'd hopefully, I mean, Brighton's a long way from me, but um, if everything oh, you, gets back to normal, right. I'd, I'd just bring... go in your helicopter. <laughs> bring, uh, I'd love to come down to Brighton and check that out when you guys are up and running yeah. and, uh, uh, do something for sure um that's fantastic um so where can people find you if they don't already um follow you on social media uh i don't really want them to find me live but they can find me online <laughs> uh at panini fora um p-a-n-i-n-i-f-o-r-a -N -I -N -I not pan fora as some people pronounce it <laughs> there's too many ninis in there but um, yeah, just yeah, on there, have a look at my collection and stuff. You know, it does feel a bit like show offy and stuff. But I think um, there's a lot of people I know who just haven't got some of the albums that I luckily collected years and years ago, and in good condition, and everything. And uh, but I've also like done a little YouTube thing now, which is <laughs> I think I've got like six subscribers or something. Oh, it takes that's a long like, time. It, it like, takes a long yeah, time. Yeah, YouTube different different ballpark in it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, what I'm doing is um, I do still collect for myself. So I open a box that maybe someone hasn't got a box of, uh, but I want to buy it, but not sure. I mean, again, we're talking earlier, you buy, you might have to buy a box for four, five, six hundred dollars. I'll open it live. You can see how it works, how it feels, what you can get out of it and what to expect from it. You know, so it's sort of like try me before you buy it. Yeah, I like that. It's a good idea. I think, um, have you ever had, has there ever been a, like UK trading sh card show or sticker show you've attended or anything like that? Because I know um, there's been a they, few people that have kind of hinted at it in the last few weeks yeah, and said that would be good. I think there, I think there has been a couple in London. I think there was one planned for May last year. Obviously, it didn't happen. But um, in terms of like a shop that solely concentrates on football cards and stickers, nothing. No, like mm. Panini headquarters HQ is only up the road for me. Tunbridge Wells, yeah. 
All right. They ain't got anything. Yeah, Tunbridge Wells. They've got nothing. They buy it. Or everything you order from there comes straight from Italy. Yeah. That's why they say three to ten days or whatever, because it's got to come across um, the med or um, well, mainland Europe and everything to get to you. But um, but I don't think there's anyone, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, but <laughs> I'm the guinea pig. See so yeah, how it works out. Yeah, I, I ain't got a problem. I ain't got a problem with like giving it a go. You know, it'll be good fun anyway. Even if we don't sell a single sticker, I couldn't care less, to be honest, just to have to meet some of the people that I've made some really good friendships with over the last year, especially on Instagram and that. Yeah. There's some great guys on there, like yourself. Yeah. yeah, you've got some great content and everything. And well, wouldn't it be amazing if we actually met people in person? I can't wait for it, mate. I can't wait for it. And I think, um, on that note, I think that's a really good place to end. Fingers crossed that uh, we can start seeing people soon. Um, all the Amazing. best, all the best to you. I really wish, hope, wish you good luck with your with your shop. Um, I think it'll do really well. Um, and guys, make sure that if you don't already, go and check out Panini Fall on Instagram and go check out the YouTube channel by the sounds of it because how many followers? Oh, I've got like ten videos on it. I actually I haven't looked at it for a week, so I might have a few more views and stuff, but. You know, it's all the all the decent boxes like the Chronicles and the Donruss and the uh, the Prism. I did a uh, Euro 2016 Prism and stuff, which has gone mad now. I wouldn't be able to afford to buy that now. I bought it for a lot less than they sell for now. Um, and a 2018 Prism like Fat Pack or whatever. So you know, some like some decent stuff in there. We got a few decent cars, I think, as well. From what I can there, remember. Oh, there you go. Then make sure you go check that out, guys. Um, thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, no worries, we can serve one again soon. Bye bye. Yeah. Cheers, mate.